Welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, 4GQ TV. I am Cerebral Paul being joined with uh, by Nick's phone. Uh, Nick's I don't know. How do we pronounce your last name? I don't want to mess that up. Principe. 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 Yeah, Principe. it's a, <laughs> as Italian as it gets. Hey, it's all right. We like I'm I'm Italian, too. We like it. We like interviewing the Italians. So the last <laughs> question I ask you is going to be very on point for us. So um, but that'll come at the end of the show. <laughs> so. Um, so and some may know Nick, even though he's not wearing the makeup, as Chrome Skull from the Laid to Rest uh, couple of movies they did way back in the day. It's been what 10, 12 years now since you did the last one. Yeah. Um, was, the first was uh, shot in 2006, came out in 2007, and the sequel came out, I think, in oh nine. The, the next think? year, I think. Yeah, the or the, yeah, yeah, uh, they were quick. Yeah. They were quick. Yeah. So, and he's also done some other things, of course, but uh, Nick, so to get us started, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into this business. Um, well, uh, I grew up in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, in New England. Just, um, I don't know. <laughs> I really just wanted to be a nerd. That's all I wanted. <laughs> I just wanted my comic books and my movies, but, um, you know, my dad and my surroundings had had other ideas for me. Um, so I was kind of thrown into like this tough guy world of Italian bullshit and New England bullshit and getting into fights if you didn't have a Red Sox hat on or getting into fights because I didn't watch football. It, it was just constant harassment growing <laughs> up. And um, I hated it at the time, but my dad got me into combat sports. Uh, he forced me to do that. So I had that under my belt. And uh, I was in a hardcore band by like my late teens. Um, it did better than we ever expected. And I got to see the world. I was taken around. And then at one point, some of the band members kind of, they felt like an ex-girlfriend a boss, your dad, and your present girlfriend all at the same time, oh. all within one person. So it, it became like this, you know, 23 hours of the day, nothing but misery. And then the one hour on stage is awesome. Uh, so a few years of touring nonstop. And then I kind of just like threw my hands in the air. And I was like, I, I, I just can't do it anymore. It's, it's just not fun. So I had to kind of look at myself and I was like, you know, I, I thought I was just going to play music for the rest of my life. And then it dawned on me that wasn't happening. So I had to really look inside myself and say, you know, what do you want to do? I mean, I'm, I'm only 22 years old at the time. And I was like, well, I love watching movies. I love smoking weed. And I like music. I was like, all right. So I did music. Not much money there. That's okay. But maybe we should do something in movies. So I was actually, we were on tour at the time with this band called Death by Stereo. And they were from Orange County. And our last show was in Texas. And my guys had to drive back to New England. And I said to the Death by Stereo guys, I was like, hey, will you give me a ride to California if I just roadie for you guys? Like, yeah, sure. So I quit my band. They had a no doubt very long, silent drive home from Texas. Uh, I moved in with my friend Dan, and then and he lived in Orange County, and then my friend Greg lived in North Hollywood. I ended up staying with him. Uh, I got a job at a music store called West LA Music on Cuenca Boulevard in Universal City. And I was like, oh man, I'm like, I didn't really just move all the way out to California to, to, to work in the warehouse of a music store. I'm like, this is a bit of a downgrade. <laughs> um, so I was just there. And one day across the street, there was a, there's this Armenian church. And there's all these trailers, parking lot. And I turned to, you know, I asked a coworker. I'm like, I'm like, what's up with that? What's going on with that? I'm like, I've seen this like kind of around town. And they're like, yeah, it's, it's, it's TV show, a commercial, a movie. Like anytime you see those star wagons, it means they're shooting something. And I was just 
like, oh my God, really? You know? And um, on my lunch break, this is how old, how long ago this is. Uh, so on my lunch break, I go across the street and I go up to the first person I see who had a clipboard and like the Burger King headset. <laughs> and I was like, obviously he's in charge of something. He's got a clipboard. So I was like, hey, do you guys need any help? And God bless this guy. He goes, what are you, a PA? I had no idea what a PA was. <laughs> I was like, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, you're in luck. He's like, we have two no call, no shows today. He goes, go go fill out an I-9 and you're on. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, huh? You know? And now it's like, oh, shit. They said yes. What the fuck do I do now? I don't know anything <laughs> about this. Like, nothing. I knew nothing. Wow, and this there is sitcom a... material right there. That's what that <laughs> right? is. <laughs> so there was a grip who's like, you know, construction, part of the team, whatever. And he had a, he had a Sepultura t-shirt on the band, like the metal band. Oh yeah. And I was like, I was like, I can talk to him. I can talk to that guy. So I went up to him and I just said, Hey man, I just got hired as a PA. I don't know what I'm doing. What does a PA do now? This man could have made my life really hard and said some dumb shit and like had a fun (laughs) little time at my expense, but he didn't. He told me, echo the call. Anytime a first AD says something, just echo what he says out loud. It's like, if they're not calling your name to go do something, just clean, clean something. Just start cleaning. (laughs) I was like, fair enough. So now within like two days, there's this six foot seven, highly tattooed man just picking up cigarette butts and just constant movement, never taking a break, Mm -hmm. you know, like just busting my ass, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, that show, America's Most Wanted. Oh. (laughs) And they kept me on. And within four months, I was the second AD. Wow. Which is like, basically, you're in charge of like making the call sheet, calling the actors, the times. You're like the eyes in the skies for base camp. So yeah, after four months of that, um, I kept, you know, there's a lot of sitting around in the industry. There's a lot of sitting around. So it's a lot of banter. And um, I got hooked up with a prop master who is a horror fanatic. This guy, his name's Mark Richardson. He still works to this day. Uh, phenomenal human being. Uh, enormous horror fan and one of the best prop masters out there. And he took a shine to me. He hired me. Um, I got my union card working for Robert England in a movie called Killer Pad that he uh, directed. It's a goofy teen horror comedy or whatever, but I got my union card on that. Um, From there, I got a set dressing job on the TV show Heroes. Wow. And wow. Okay. I here, got a clear. first season or second yeah, yeah, yeah. season. That's going to make first. a difference. Okay. So the good first. season, the good season. Yeah. Here we have the good... <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? So I got hired there and it was at a lot called Sunset and Gower, right? right? And there's only like five stages there. So it's usually like two TV shows and a movie. And the crews are very incestual. So I started out working on Heroes. Midway through that, I ended up on Dexter. So I was a set dresser on Dexter for three seasons. Sadly, on my IMDb, it just says uh, like like two episodes too, which is which is kind of frustrating. But you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so through there, stunt coordinators, and there was like, I don't know. You have to take like what people say in Hollywood with like a grain of salt. Everybody's like, oh, you'd be perfect for this. I'm gonna call you for this. So you there, and you're like, whatever, you know. <laughs> So this guy was like, you'd be a great villain. I think you'd be an awesome stuntman. He's like, do you have any like kind of stunt background? I was like, well, I I fought on an amateur level. Like, you know, when MMA like first started and, you know, I have a black belt in Kempo and I box. He's just like, yeah, so that's a yes. Okay. Um, So he was like, you know, we'll hire you if I ever need a giant stuntman. Because really what it comes down to is th- there's not a lot of giant stuntmen because they're, they're usually like smaller guys, you know? Yeah. Um, so as time went on, um, the guy, Mark, he was friends with Rob Hall. And Rob 
did all the effects on that Robert England movie. So we're always hanging out and I expressed to Rob, I was like, look, you know, I'm not some dude who's trying to be a star, this or that. I was like, man, the only thing I've ever wanted is to play a monster or a slasher in a horror movie. I'm like, you know, I, I'm really excited just to have a, a job working in cinema. But, you know, if I had a dream, it would be to play a monster or a slasher. And it was just, we were just making conversation, you know. So fast forward a year and a half. And I went to the Wrong Turn 2 premiere. Uh, Joe Lynch, he'd written, directed right. that. And just hanging out, I went by myself because I'd lived right down the street. And it felt like at that time, um, the horror scene in Hollywood was very, it was a lot more friendly. Um, there seemed to be a lot less psychophants of just people looking to get something out of it instead of just enjoying each other's company or whatever. Right. But I mean, that that's just Hollywood. Everybody's looking to better, not better, but, you know, enhance themselves. Right. So I'm just at the screening. Rob comes up and he's like, hey, uh, smoke a cigarette with me. So we go outside and start smoking and he just goes, you want to chase my wife around in Maryland with a big knife? I was like, what do you mean? He's just like, I'm doing a slasher movie. He's like, I want you to be my slasher. Oh, my God. Like, it, I, I don't know how to put it into words. Like, it was like I won the lottery, you know? It was just like, I mean, what do you say when someone is offering you your biggest dream? Yeah. You know? So, obviously, yes. Uh, three months later, we were in Maryland for a month shooting. Four months after that, this is easily one of my favorite. I've told this story before, but I didn't tell you, obviously. So I get a call. It's like maybe three weeks before Lay to Rest 1 is coming out. And Rob Hall calls me and goes, hey, just talk to Fangoria. He's like, this month, we might get the cover to Fangoria, Ooh. but there's a good chance that Terminator Salvation is going to get the cover. So he's like, don't, don't, you know, and I'm like, Terminator, I'm like, oh, it's nice to be nominated. It's the first thing I thought, like, oh, you know, like, yeah, I'm, oh I got to fuck with Terminator. Get the fuck, like, not happening, you know, like, whatever. So I kind of accepted it. Uh, next day, I get a call at 5 a.m., 5 a.m., which is, you know, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And this guy's like, hey, it's so-and-so from Fangoria. I just wanted to call and let you know you've made the cover. And I was like, fuck off. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a prank. <laughs> totally thought it was a prank. Like, I thought it was Rob. Like, saying, like, calls back again. And I'm like, ha, ha, ha. Like, you know, and hang up. Then I get a call from Rob. And he's like, did you just fucking hang up on Fangoria? I was like, oh, shit, that's real? <laughs> That's funny. That's really hilarious. A person? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, yeah, and you fucking hung up on him like two times in a row. Like, maybe call him back. <laughs> so I call him back. I set it up. I'm like, you can understand where I just believe this, you know. And it's still like just the, I don't know. I still didn't think it was real, right? So I do the interview. And maybe three weeks later, they're like, oh, it's on newsstands. Now, at the time, uh, I was living in Hollywood, and right at Sunset and Vine, there used to be a Barnes & Noble there, but it's now a Walgreens. But I walked in, and I saw it from a distance. Just a big crumb skull face. That's the whole color. I stared at it for maybe like 40 seconds, just staring at it. And I started crying my <laughs> eyes out. And... To this day, outside of like the birth of my my children, mm. that is like the best thing that's ever happened to me because, yeah. I mean, I don't know, it, you know, dreams don't really come true all that often. No, you know? and, and, and then, your your story is one that you hear and you go, "Nah, that couldn't really happen nowadays." That's something that never, you know. But then you're you're not the first person that we've had on here go that they've kind of started that where they kind of tripped into the business type of thing, you know? And yeah. I mean, well, it, there's like, like something to be said, like, you, I don't want to say ego, but you have to have some serious ambition 
and you have to believe in yourself when no one else does. And that's, that's really hard. That's really hard, you know? Right. So like a, a frustrating thing when I hear like people starting out and they're like, I'm going to be a star. I want to be a star. It's like, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, you know, good luck with that. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> you know, I think reality TV is where you want to go then. <laughs> Cause you can just be famous for existing. Like do that. Yeah. I think a lot of times a young actor's goal to just be, I want to be a working actor. Just, just go for that because that's fucking yeah. hard enough as it is. Yeah. But the, the guy, idea the, of being a star. Yeah. The idea, I mean, look at these actors that we know their faces because they've been in 300, 400 different things and ne they were never the, the, the headliner mostly, but, but you know, they were there and every time you see them, you go, Hey, I know that guy. And he was in this that guy. movie that I yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. those are the guys, those are the guys that when they pass away, those are the ones I, I feel more most of the time because they oh, were yeah. so much a part of what I saw growing up and, you know, more so than the stars themselves because they were in everything, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, the, the supporting characters, man, that, that, you know, they never get enough credit for character actors, yeah. like people that are just grinding it out, you know? And there's so many of them, you know, where you might not know their name, but you're like, I love that guy. <laughs> so do you say I've seen that? that dude so many times i love that guy real quick what is that? i don't know <laughs> yeah i get a lot of that too uh real quick i'm going to introduce uh to the interview this is death dealer that's all we know her as <laughs> and I, sorry I, i'm hopefully, late hopefully she watched the movie before i i told her what movies to watch because she's like <laughs> i'd never heard of this i'm like oh you're missing out well, <laughs> okay. well like he was saying in my defense i as soon as I looked up the credentials and started looking at what you've worked on in the past, I, I've actually seen you in multiple things. You're one of those people I see in a movie. And I'm like, I know this guy. I've seen this. Yeah, it's, what he's saying, well, six, six foot seven. He's hard to miss, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Sir, you've met my husband, tall yeah. guys. It, that kind of just like, mm. I don't really see the, I'm five, four. My husband's six, one. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gap. used to tall guys. Mm. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Mm. I'm the shortest one in my family. My daughter mm. is five foot one at 10 years old. So oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I stand no go. chance of being tall in my family. Yeah. <laughs> it's overrated, but, trust me. <laughs> but um there's I, a I lot would... more hindrings to being tall than you'd think. Like I think like yeah. people are under the assumption that like oh the so many doors must just open for you because you're tall. Well, it's like, well, well you, you walk into the top of them though. So well, I, mean, imagine, your head. I imagine yeah. when it goes to like horror <laughs> movies, it might be a little easier for you. And if you're going for the role well, of one of the I, villains, I kind of something. meant like in the sense of like, there's a lot more limitation than yeah. there are open doors. Like, yeah, just, just example. Like I could never be a pilot, like an right. air force pilot. <laughs> I can never be a race car driver, <laughs> you know, but I've ever heard somebody mention yeah. that it actually yeah. mean it. <laughs> shorter yeah. guy could play basketball. Yeah. yeah, it's true. There's a lot. I mean, Spud Webb was like five, four, but he was nasty, yeah. nasty yep. yeah. threes all day. I can know? reach the top shelf, but you may not be able to get to that bottom shelf as easily as <laughs> yeah, I can. Not there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I was, so, I, I mean, was, you know, yeah. They, and even for background stuff, because you're so tall, you might stand out so much that they don't want you back there because it draws attention away from the, the main part well, of the scene. Yeah. Well, I, I, I never did background work, but I mean, one of the biggest problems I always had is like, uh, if I'm out for like best friend, yeah, the mm -hmm. hero's best friend, so, uh, it's like, well, we can't have him. He's going to make me look like a dwarf. Like I, <laughs> you know, he's too tall. You Just know? ask Tom Cruise for a step stool. That'd be fine. It'll no, be fine. yeah. I mean, that's 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 the reality of it. I yeah. mean, like, that, it's just a, a tough. And then, yeah. I mean, I think every show I've ever worked on, the director of photography has got some kind of fucking comment about how he needs a ladder mm. to light me or, <laughs> you know, they're saying like, yep, never heard that before. Right on. Yeah. You know? But keep yeah. it original. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can slam on me. Just make it witty. Give me some wit. Okay, so we're we're up to you've done Chrome School. You've you, you've made the cover of Fangoria, which is no small task, especially mm -hmm. against Terminator. You know, it's like wow. Yeah, 
Easily the worst Terminator of the series, though. That's true. I, I will say that. Easily the worst one. So it's not the biggest accomplishment, but I, hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'll but, take but, it. I, but I will say, I just watched re, uh, Laid to Rest uh, the other day. I was going to watch both, but I only had time to catch Laid to Rest again. For being, I don't know if I want to call it low budget or because. Oh, low movie. budget. But, but, but you, yeah. guys, you guys had some pretty named people in those roles, though. I mean, well, the thing with that was is so rob the writer director he'd worked in special effects makeup for about 25 years at this point he's worked with all the big names just a ton of them so he had a lot of inside connections yeah. in that. now also if it was just a random movie you're looking at about 1.5 million just in the effects like just in the effects. Well, maybe not 1.5, but easily like a million. Okay. But since it was Rob shop doing it, it was all for cost. So we made the entire movie for a million dollars versus, you know, so, I mean, right. that, that was definitely an advantage it had. I mean, it, it's director was a, a legendary yeah. special effects guy. That's the, you know? that's the same advantage that Damien, Damien had with, um, with, um, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's my understanding. Is yeah. He yeah. was uh, also a, a special effects guy. Right. Yeah. That's definitely helpful because that's yeah. like, look, if you're making a horror movie, you got to put the money in the right place, and right. you got to have the effects. That's the and first it, thing the fans will tear yeah. apart. You know. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially if you so leave too in the digital, because there's those like me who do not like digital special effects. Well, oh, I despise it. Especially for gore. Despise I hate it. to say it for gore. I want practical effects. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, and, and the second yeah. one, there's three kills that were digitally enhanced. And then in the first film, yeah. there's one that was enhanced. You know, the, enhanced the Sean, okay. the Sean Whalen yeah. kill. Yeah. Enhanced yeah. is okay because if it's done right, you don't notice it. But, sure. Uh, yeah. But if it's not done right, if it's like, especially with blood splatter and stuff, it's you all know, you oh, notice is, at yeah, that point. That's all you, that's yeah, all you see. All, it completely <laughs> takes that, you out of yeah, it. After that, you don't care anymore. It's like, whatever. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, I mean, what's funny is your movie even had a Terminator tie-in because you had uh, Thomas Decker. Was, was oh, really... <laughs> Thomas Decker, Brian Austin yeah. Green, and <laughs> Lena, Lena Hetty. Lena was uh, yeah. Sarah Connor. Like, at yeah. that time, uh, Game of Thrones yeah. didn't exist. No, you know? and, and Thomas so, Decker was uh, John Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she, um, Lena was super cool. Yeah, I mean that that's easily like one of my favorite kills of all time is when I kill her. I always <laughs> like to say like I'm like oh I killed Queen Cersei's from Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of she people that, that wish they could have it. <laughs> at a certain yeah, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, In fact, we need to find somebody to 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 create that image of Chrome Skull going after Cersei. You know, at, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that was before game of thrones but i yeah. mean she was definitely already a well-known she'd right. already done like 300 and she was on sarah connor blah, right. blah. and rob did the effects on sarah connor so oh, that so that's how that came to be so that's <laughs> how thomas came in and that yeah. yeah yeah it's always something like that the business is very incestual but but to me that gave the uh that gave the movie uh, cred in a sense you know Oh yeah, um, I mean that's definitely a low budget pitfall. Is you could have a really really good script, and when you don't have enough money, and you have to just cast who's best available, mm. it gets tough, you know. Yeah. So we were definitely lucky that uh, the film got enhanced with such you know tier caliber uh, talent, you know. Let's see, and then. Then you did a uh, Chrome Skull Laid to Rest two, and which probably mm -hmm. must have started shooting pretty much after the first one released. Or <laughs> yeah, it um. So when they called me for Laid to Rest two, I was actually working in Arkansas on a movie called Madison County, another slasher movie. And okay, so not the Clint Eastwood Madison County something. To... <laughs> no, no bridges. <laughs> no bridges. Just Madison County. <laughs> Uh, so yeah I was doing that and the whole thing was a bit rushed um, and Rob was going through a divorce Ooh. and it was kind of the start 
of all his like major life problems kind of came there. And I think he was using Lader S2 as a distraction and a bit of a revenge tool, ah, you know, because his wife, who was in the first film, you know, I won't go into it, but she did him dirty. And Rob found her clone. The woman that looks exactly like her and then killed her. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I think that's everybody's dream, though. When somebody <laughs> like you know screws you over, you just you really want to murder him on film, yeah. And get away yeah. with it. Well, I mean, in, in all reality, though, um, in my opinion, I thought it was just following the template of the slasher films before us, where the hero of the first film dies within the first ten minutes of the second. That's yeah, it's kind of not an uncommon rant. thing. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. So we just really embraced that, and um, it was less money. I didn't agree with a lot of it. But yeah, I mean, it's got its moments, but I I don't like it as much as the first. I I do know, at least I read online, and you can confirm this, you actually, there's a scene where one of the guys gets a chrome skull tattoo, and that's actually you getting inked on your back, correct? Yes, yeah. (laughs) Um, One of the... So... Rob had this tattoo guy come in shop and on that day, I think like six of us got Chrome skull tattoos. <laughs> um, but yeah, they filmed mine. Cause at first he's like, Hey, will you get it on your chest? I'm like, I don't have room. I, I don't, it's, <laughs> you know, I'm like, there's like about this much space on my back. I'm like, it's yours if you want it though. You know? <laughs> so uh, yeah. I got tattooed. They filmed mm. it, and then they doubled it as a uh, his chest. Yeah. So cool. I have a couple tattoos for a few movies that I did that kind of like, you know, um, on my calf. I did. Oh God, what's the fucking name of it? I did a horrible fucking. It was my first <laughs> creature gig of all time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm not hiding it. I literally just can't think of the name. Mm. I can't think of the name. I'll it's find a piece it of shit. You. Don't worry. I'm not. Yeah. The it. character was called Sparky, <laughs> and I got a tattoo of him on my leg. Just you know, first character. And then um, I got a tattoo of 2007 Michael Myers because I did props on the yeah. the Halloween remake, and I was a stunt double for a deleted scene. Ooh. So I, I wanted to ask you about that because I saw kind of that meant. and I was wondering how you kind of wandered into doing props and, and the artwork on some of these. Well, the props, um, when Tyler first held the knife that they had, it mm-hmm. looked like a butter knife in his hand. It looked stupid. So <laughs> we had to try to find uh, a butcher knife that didn't look ridiculous in his hand. Mm-hmm. So we made a very like huge butcher knife that just looked normal with his meat paws, you know? Uh, the other thing I built was when he breaks out of the mental institution and he breaks the chains, mm-hmm. um, I made a uh, magnetic chains oh. that you can snap. Oh, cool. Uh, I made say, a good 50% of the masks that are in his cell as a child in the insane asylum you know i don't know if you remember but the walls are covered with masks yeah yeah me and the production designer a man named anthony trembley he did a ton of them you know it's actually if you watch the documentary about the making of it you see me pop up like a million times (laughs) going up to going up to rob zombie with like this big bucket of masks and i'm like hey I'm like, if we shot it already, I wrote shot on the inside of the mask. I'm like, so you can pick any ones that don't say shot. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just, yeah. So I'm in the documentary a bunch for that. (laughs) Cool. That's really cool. Not one of my favorite Halloweens, no offense to Rob, but you know. (laughs) it's My whole thing with that one is that I always tell people, if you take Halloween, the title off, and you just it's Michael, some guy named Michael. It's, it's well, a good movie. That, like that it's movie not a was kind of screwed from the jump because um, I think when they announced that Rob was making it, people were like amazed, so stoked. They're like, oh my God, it, it, it's one of us is making it. 
You know, that's incredible. I know the studio but, hindered him a lot. The well, studio kept getting in his then way. The script got leaked. And the initial script was like kind of making Michael like a sexual deviant. And he had a very, very Ted Bundy backstory. And yeah. That's not that my that ain't issue, it, man. My issue my and this is my only issue with both Rob Zombies Halloween movies in, in entirely because the effects were really good. I enjoyed the masks and the fact that they made oh. Michael a gigantic beast walking around perfect i felt bad for michael and like understood why he was doing things and that's, I a that's a problem sympathize with my See, and, and shape that's, that's my my biggest complaint about that movie is they tried to explain why michael was the way michael was too much i much prefer for him. I know I Michael, Michael Myers the shouldn't yeah. get the, the Frankenstein route of the misunderstood monster. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's supposed the, to be a, a, a boogeyman. Yeah. I don't yeah, need the, any more. I didn't need an explanation why he is well, the way he is. It's unnecessary for some characters. Like, look, but bottom line with horror or, or anything for that matter, yeah. when you don't know the backstory, or you don't know, we fear what we don't know. We right. fear what we don't understand. So the second that you put ink to paper of saying like, this is why he's like that. Right. It destroys that mystery. You know, it totally destroys the mystery. And it's not as scary anymore if you have an explanation. Right. And, and it's to, to always going to be scarier yeah. if you don't know, if you're like, why is he always doing this? You don't well, know. Yeah. Let's be honest, the first two killings he does in that movie, I would have murdered them a lot sooner than he did and probably a lot more brutally than he did. Like, yeah, I that's, don't that's... see the problem. And then when he breaks out of the asylum, the two that set it off, they had it coming. They yeah, but then it, then it like takes like a shift where it's like they try to make you dislike him, how it's like he right. kills the Danny Trejo character yeah. who was like a father figure. Right. Yeah. It's just a jumbled yeah. And mess. the I mean, and then what they did to Loomis, I really that really turned me off too. Sure, yeah, turning, yeah, yeah. Money Loomis hungry. into a, yeah. turning Loomis into a you know looking but, for that that celebrity you know. But with yeah. all of these things being said, if we took what we and we just put it under, it's kind of like season no, for of me. The it would still be a, a bad people... movie. It would still be a bad movie. <laughs> I still I think it's a good movie if you take out the <laughs> Halloween aspect. Yeah. If you ignore all that, it's a great movie. <laughs> the second uh, one. It's a little more iffy on that one, just because I don't the understand the horse. <laughs> I'll be—I know he was forced into it, yeah. so I'm not even going to give him shit for well, that because he's redeemed himself with other yeah. movies. So he wanted to make uh, <laughs> the comic "The Nail." Um, yes, Rob Zombie had a comic. It's called "The Nail" about right. like a pro wrestler who fights monsters. He wanted to make that, and the Weinstein's are like. We'll Give let us you another do that Halloween. If you do us this Give us first. another Halloween. We'll let you do it. Mm. Yeah, I do remember and, him saying that he wanted to make something else, and they told him the only way he would be able to make any other movie is if he did Halloween too. And he just more or less shit a script out. <laughs> he was like, so I he didn't plowed even care. through it. Yeah. And there was even a crew member who was like, Hey, you should you should do a comedy next. And he goes, What do you think I'm doing now? <laughs> no. I, yeah. I, I just think like yeah. i said i think that the remakes yeah. rob zombies remakes kind of get yeah. the same treatment that season of the witch did that i uh, know season of the witch is actually a decent movie once you break it out of the michael myers thing. well uh, but that's the thing if most people don't realize that carpenter wanted to do an anthology series from oh, no. the jump. i mean most people now do but yeah well yeah now <laughs> it's not as as uncommon to know yeah. it's more common knowledge than it used but, to be but well, they're just like lower budget movie stuff. And it's like a lot of the stunt coordinating thing is like, I don't even get a chance to hire stuntmen. I just get like a day to train an actor on how to fall mm -hmm. or how to throw a punch better and things like that. And then after a couple of those credits, I was actually given like an actual stunt team and things like that. But uh, I think you'll notice any anybody who's working in this business, um, you need to get a paycheck however the hell you can because oh, yeah, they're not no. yeah, very I often. I'm actually kind no. of uh, surprised I don't see any producing credits because usually I, more I see that yeah. quite often. Um, I, but 
just real quick. Definitely don't want anything. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Answer. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, I just had another question about the stunt coordinating thing. Um, Ooh. are you actually like classically trained in any fighting techniques or any? The, you missed um, the beginning of the interview. That's what you I get did. To be late. I did. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I, I no, apologize yeah, if you've uh, already covered this. <laughs> I, but the reason I asked, I do, I was actually classically trained in multiple fighting styles myself. And I do do um, special effects, makeup, and prop myself. So that's why I find these things extremely oh, cool. Cool. I run a haunted house mm. for the month of October. <laughs> yeah, that's a good hustle. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, ever since I was a little boy, um, I've been involved in some kind of combat sports right up until now. Um, I've got a black belt in Kenpo, uh, brown belt in Shotokan karate, a little bit of Krav. Uh, and presently, uh, I am fighting with a 8-0 and amateur Muay Thai record. Uh, I'm going to have my first pro fight in either July or August. Got to get some medieval sword fighting lessons in on that resume, <laughs> my friend. I'm telling you, it is one of the best yeah. things I ever picked up. I can toss somebody three times my size thanks to that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, combat sports have been in my life the whole time. Uh, I, I can't picture a time where it wasn't there. Uh, yeah, and, now, and now he's got the he's, he's young kids telling him how to wrap his hands or did they doesn't need to wrap his hands so, you know, yeah that was an interesting one amazing. like that was like a few a few days ago i think yeah that was a i just kind of noticed like, like that yeah yeah well this gym is is somewhat new to me um i lost my last coach he moved to uh to utah so i had to go to a new gym and after a few days i noticed it was like i can see a lot of these kids they're not wrapping their hands like why are they not wrapping their and I was like, hey, what's the deal with that? And they're like, well, you know, yeah. if you punch properly, you don't need to wrap your hands. <laughs> and I was like, there are so many ways to hurt yourself <laughs> without you don't have to do anything. Like, yeah. you can just get hurt. It's just like, this is one of the one things <laughs> you can take a very <laughs> small preemptive strike about, you know? But oh, hey, I'm a big believer in like, taping. Call, 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 call me in 10 years when you can't hold a fork. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the joke was always like, <laughs> it's like, if oh, your, your hands aren't wrapped. So it's like, oh, well, you don't punch very hard anyways. What's the point? <laughs> right. You know, it's just <laughs> kind of a slam. Well, as someone who used to play sports yourself, I'm sure like I grew up playing sports as well. And I was, uh, I was really big into soccer. I used to wrap my feet and my ankles with tape before the games because um, you, most of your injuries are ankles and knees and on women, we tend to have generally weaker ankles anyway. Um, my knee specialist yeah. told me that one after I had a knee injury, <laughs> he was surprised I damaged my knee and not my ankle. Um, but oh, I, yeah. I, I, mean, I tape my ankles all the yeah. time. And when I did do boxing and things, yeah, you tape your hands up because yeah, you might know yeah. how to hit with something without breaking yeah. your knuckles. It doesn't mean you won't chip them or crack them or just jam a finger. Uh, it's not, yeah. that's, um, it's not for the knuckles. The whole point of wrapping your hands is your wrist. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't snap, bend, or go too far back. Yeah. Or just the, the yeah. impact. And plus, that if you're not is... holding it dead straight, when you hit something, it can like yeah, kind of shift it. Go yeah. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, it takes 30 seconds to do. Yeah. Just, you know. Whatever. I will um, tape. So, but, then, tape. but like it, like yeah, said, look, look how long, look how long you've been doing it though, and see if these guys are doing it in another 30, 40 years. Or they're not they're... going to. Yeah. I've seen many of kids yeah. come yeah. years after me, and I'm like, you guys really should consider doing this, this, and this. Yeah. And like, oh no, as long as we do that, and I'm like, okay, let yeah. me know. Oh, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't give advice. I, I <laughs> definitely no, no one's. I mean, hey. I mean, to the point of it, even yeah. in a gym, I, I kind of just speak when spoken yeah. to, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very aware that I'm the oldest guy there. Um, if, they, if they wish for me to impart any kind of wisdom, they can ask. I'm not just going to yeah. play Yoda yeah. and telling them what I think. Well, back in my day, like, kids, so, this yeah. is your hint. So, Come to yeah. the older folks. Even if yeah. we don't Figure look that out. old, we, we so, got uh, it together. Know. We've made it this it far. Is. Yeah. Come so, ask us. So, um, so uh, as we start to wrap up here, uh, so what have you got anything on, on that you're working on or that we should know? About? Well, the interesting, uh, yeah. one thing I wanted to talk about, this is like the first kind of press I've done in a minute. Um, but, uh, 
so maybe about like five years ago, I, I started dipping my toe into the the writer's world, you know, mm -hmm. and something I kept noticing is I would write these scripts and I'd hand them in and every single time it was, you know, we're not interested in this right now. It's not something that we want to pursue, but we'd like to hire you to write something for us. And that's great. You know, that's awesome that anyone wants to give me a few bucks to, to write mm -hmm. anything that that's a big deal. Um, but it, it's, it's like, it's not your vision. I've yet to have anything that's like my vision kind of come out. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the most heartbreaking, oh God, just thinking about it drives me nuts. So in 2019, I got kind of hired to write this script where um, it was kind of a parody of thrill killers, like not a straight up comedy, but it was basically about a group of thrill killers mm -hmm. who do a heist of a heist have to fight a supernatural slasher Ooh. so the idea of it was is here's these awful terrible people and they're going to go against the slasher and now the slasher is the good guy oh i like that i like you that know a lot. if that makes any sense well interesting enough <laughs> the script did the round it attracted megan fox and it got Machine Gun Kelly. And mm. they wanted to be the leads. They wanted to be Johnny and Clyde, the guy and the girl. Now, everybody and their mother wants this script. They're, they're love it. This, oh, man, all this praise, you know. And I started listening to it. Giant mistake. Mm. So I'm like, oh, wow, I got this, this hot property, man. We're, we're good. I'm like, ah, maybe I should act in it so I can get another job in there. So I could be on set, focus on it. So I acted in it. And still, oh, great script, man. Oh, so good. Oh, shit, hold on. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly, he's got to be on tour till January. So we can either wait till he gets off tour or we have to recast. Now, I'm just the writer. I have no say at all about anything. So they're like, all right, so we got to change it then. Megan Fox is like, all right, change the lead bad guy to a woman. I'll just play the bad guy and then we'll cast some young, hot people, whatever, for Johnny and Clyde. So they cast, uh, God, I don't even know his name, but he was like from the Nickelodeon days. Uh, his name was like, oh God, I can't believe it. I can't think of it. Anyways, he's like a dreamboat, like uh, Teeny Bop. They loved him, yeah. whatever. And then the girl, I don't even know who she was that they cast, right? So whatever, we're moving along. So as anybody knows, you write a script and then the, a director gets a hold of it. He's going to make some changes. And I felt like I was in a very, very good position because the changes that he made were minor and they were agreeable. And he checked with me, which is just, that's a lot of respect as is. So we're filming it. A couple scenes don't get shot. Okay, no big deal. So at this point, I'm about 80% happy this final product. And that's, that's great. That is phenomenal. Okay, that's, those are good numbers. Now, the interesting thing is, so this production company was the one that pushed the script and had me do it. I'm not going to say their name. Now, they had pre-sold the film to a distribution company. And the distribution company was the one that was championing it the most. They loved it. Mm -hmm. So they're pushing it. Blah, blah, blah. Film wraps. A few months go by. More months. Now it's a year. I'm like, okay, so what's going on, guys? Okay, that distribution company went under, and they sold all their stuff to the distribution company. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this distribution company did not share the vision mm. of these other guys, right? Mm. And they proceed to, to absolutely suck all the heart out of it. All the jokes. Just all the feeling, everything that made the movie great, they took it out. So now, essentially, this parody that I made has become what I was parodying. Like, full circle. Like, everything I was making fun of is now that. They wanted to play it straight? 
basically. The, and, and, and and it ruined it. Yeah. It's a fucking ridiculous movie. And to play something straight like that was just obscene. Right. So it went from Megan Fox, like, oh, I bought this this fifteen thousand dollar wig to wear for it. And when the movie premieres, I, I'm gonna get a carpet that matches the, the wig. Movie. So when I walk, it's gonna be not like well, she was so excited for it, and then she saw it. Dead silence. Dead silence. And I'm like, I don't fucking blame you at all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then all this shit, man. Like the movie comes out, it's fucking horrible. It is so bad. Mm. I, I I didn't even finish it, right? Oh. And I was just like, I'm like, man, this is gonna get like horrible reviews. I'm like, I don't want to see it. I don't want anything to do with it. And then it was just so frustrating too, because like, so now during this two years of it just floating around in the in the ether. I was like, hey, can I do promotions for this? Can I set up some stuff? And um, this, you know, one of the bigger horror websites out there was like, oh, we'd like to premiere the trailer, like an exclusive. I was like, oh, that's amazing. So I called the production company. I'm like, hey, these guys want to, like, trust me. If these guys want to get behind it, you need to let them. They're like, they are the industry. They're like, oh, I don't know. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, why would you not want these people to promote it? It's free. They are asking us to do it. No, no, no. And I didn't understand why. Then I saw the movie and I was like, thank God they didn't agree to it. Like, because I I wanted to get my name off of it, you know? Yeah. Um, And I really just, it's, it's, it's like two years old now, so I can like talk about it. But at the time when it released, it's just safe to say that when someone doesn't do press right. about their project, they fucking hate it. Yeah. You know? Oh, he, I, yeah. I, I don't know yeah, if yeah. everybody knows that right at the gate, but yeah. seeing the fact that I did no interviews, I did nothing, not yeah. even on my Twitter of like, hey, go see this. <laughs> well, that I, means. I, yeah. And I, there's a. Because I, I just look bad if I'm like, you know, fuck this movie. Don't see yeah, it. Like, yeah. like You, you kind of just look like a bully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but just, at you the have to same hope that time, silence. At, at the same time, that's actually becoming more of a common thing that people are noticing more. Whereas up until I would say probably close to like three or four years ago, most people didn't notice when people weren't doing press junkets for the movies too often. They just kind of assumed they didn't have money for the the you know right to do well, it. The biggest um, thing, but that with, I just really wish that they would do right mm-hmm. is. When the, you see these reviews and things, they're like, well, Nick Principe wrote this, and the director, they right. did this, da, da, da. And all I'm thinking is like, man, you have no idea how this shit works. Like, yes, I wrote it, but now there's like eight different people <laughs> putting their fingers in it. and da, da, da. So I just wish like when, when they do that, I wish that they would put like yeah. some kind of disclaimer before the thing where it's just like, uh, but the film that you're about to see has been majorly yeah. tampered with by producers, That's executive been, uh, producers. See, but I think the this one, is one, not the true vision of the writer director that they initially set out for. But one, see, one of the other one of the other horror writer directors producers that, that I've spoken to in one of the interviews we did, he had that relatively recently happen, and he says, "Look, once I write and I hand it in, sometimes it's a crapshoot whether what I see come back at me is going to be any good, and sometimes it's not." And he said, a lot of times I'm afraid what I'm going to get back when I start getting the notes and stuff. Well, you know? see, me and I, a lot of people that I talk to on a regular basis, um, I, I have quite a few horror friends and family that are all about horror. That's all we watch is what we talk about. You know, we live for it. Um, and we've noticed and and it's been a thing that's been happening for a very long time. But I would say probably in the last 15 years or so at least anytime they really push that oh this is the same producer from the exorcist the original 19 you know and and this is the same you know makeup special effects artist from this 1973 movie or you know the it's the um the choreo struggling for a name from... recognition of a name well, that yeah, they, they, they yeah. always do that and they, that's they've the, always and, done that you know. but dying on a name well well, my, There's my no big story. thing. My my big thing is a lot of times just because somebody's producing something and they've written some stuff, and, like there's a lot of stuff that's been was produced by John. Carpenter they might not have even been on set. Yeah, they might not <laughs> even been there. Some, we sometimes have, like, is, a producer matter of me. producing, he, he hands him a check. Is, he hands it up. Is one producer goes, yeah. "Hey, do you know mm. this actor? Could you get this script in front of this actor? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could send it to him. Yeah. 
Oh, you just produced. You're now a producer. Yeah. Well, we actually Fucking... talked to uh we did an interview with the guy a few months back and he was talking about that and he's actually been producer on in quite a few things as well, but he said that he was like just be he's like I'll be honest as a producer I don't really do a whole lot. I do, but I don't. There's so many. Uh, he's like, when you see multiple production with multiple producers and things and assistant producers. Right. And Some are more involved than others. They're just not even. Yeah. Most role. of them aren't yeah. even involved in it. They just yeah. put a little money towards it. And that's that. So a lot of times yeah. these names, like I've seen John Carpenter's name used for movies. And I know that he didn't really have a whole no. lot to do with it. Yeah. He might have done yeah. some of the soundtrack because he likes composing. But I, I watched a movie the other day that had, I kid you not, no less than like 30 producers listed. Oh, I watched one that had like, like 110. <laughs> there was know, one with like, 110. It was a Kickstarter mm, movie. I was like, what in the fuck? I know half of you didn't one of the even things make it into the stage. With like straight to video is like for me, a sign that you know it's bad is when the movie has a million of those palms. Yeah. Just showing how many film fests it's been in when they just pollute the poster with yeah. all the palms. Like, I always try to give it up because you know mind. what? Because you only you should only have to go to one or two festivals, and then the movie gets bought. I so feel, saying that you did like a hundred of them just tells me that. Mm, I feel that like the mainstream horror community is trying to push these um, based on true life, and, and obviously well over exaggerated, and. I just feel like they're not really pushing the right movies for mainstream. They're more or less picking okay. like I'm if, sorry, but if a, if a certain activity. producer, if a certain producer, writer, friend of ours of this program sees this and hears that, realize that we are still gonna talk good about your movie because I'm Oh yeah, no. I'm yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm not hating on anyone in particular. My my biggest beef is for like movies like the paranormal activities. Oh, the because no, feel... we do have one friend who is working on a movie that is based on a real life event. That really oh yeah, no, 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 so. I, no, no, no. I, I'm not saying, but I mean, like the paranormal activity. People love that. Yeah. People love that yeah, based they, on they, a true story. Yeah, but love paranormal I mean, remember, activity I mean, was a Nick, Nick, is Nick is closer to my age. I don't know how close you are to. I'm over fifty five. I'll just put it there. Um, so, but when we were growing up, you know, that's how the Amityville Horror was pitched. Based on actual yeah, events, no, in Texas, know. the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was pitched yeah. the same way, and yeah, no, I'm not saying that yeah. they, I, I have an issue with all well, that. Well, they just take general. a lot of liberties with it yeah. sometimes because they know it sells. You know? My yep. issue is, is like the movies like Paranormal Activity, where I can appreciate that they made it on little to no budget, and I can appreciate the fact that they didn't have an actual script for it while filming. They just kind of well. Yeah, I well, think. but it so shows this is in the what movie. It with was badly activity. done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Paranormal Activity first premiered in this thing called Scream Fest. Uh, at one, I think it's still going, but it's every year in October, and it's just a slew of awesome horror movies. Well, at that time, Miramax was going to that with the intention of let's check out some of these independent low budgets and. We'll buy it and we'll remake it with a budget. Mm -hmm. So they went and then they saw a paranormal activity and they're like, we can release this as is and make it seem like it's all found footage and da -da -da. we don't have to invest any more money in outside of pr uh, promotion. And, and I feel like that was kind of, it was. That's how it happened. Yeah, I'm not and a found I, footage guy myself. Was... But you know, I really there were so know. many it's other done right. I think that the Poughkeepsie tapes is like one of the best horror yeah, movies. Was, oh yeah, no, I I do ever. like. There are so many other found footage movies that I am well okay with. Um, I I'm not the biggest fan of the Blair Witch. Yeah. However, it was fairly it was good for what it is. When, when I think of found out. footage, I think of the Poughkeepsie tapes, and I think of Cannibal Holocaust. Yes, Cannibal, Cannibal Holocaust. Holocaust perfect yeah. example. They made it to where it was a true thing. It was a real documentary. The director yeah, I mean, had to, to the go point to court where they and everything yeah, else. I mean, yeah, like, right. that's he, serious. You know. So I'm going to cut us off because we are past the time that Nick wanted to be with us. Oh, I do apologize sorry. for that, Nick. No, don't worry. I, I, I keep hearing my kids scooting around. <laughs> but uh, uh, Yeah, so she's made an, appearance of, yeah, made an appearance a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> you have adorable so, and, kids. And creeper deeper. Say. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess on a final note, uh, the last so because of the strike, like right before mm. the strike, I had four projects like back to back, like it was gonna like really make my family's life much easier. And the strike happened and they all went away except for one. I filmed that in February in uh, Mississippi. Really proud of it. It's uh, a lot like a like a bad lieutenant kind of thing. It's just called uh, it's either called Play Dirty or Filth. I don't know which title they're using, but it's a two B movie. Uh, it comes out in May. Uh, it's got Theo Rossi as the lead. Uh, oh, nice. Ron Perlman, Ron Perlman, and then myself and. I'm the only one playing a biker. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's funny. You got Theo Rossi and Perlman and you're the one playing the biker. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Thomas Q. Jones, he's in it, who is uh, a famous running back for right. NFL at one point. Uh, he's been on like Luke Cage and a bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, that's the only thing I have coming out as of right now. And then um, I'm shooting uh, an anthology film called deadly endings in june and cool. there's a kickstarter going on for that right now uh it's gonna be me dave sheridan felissa rose uh, a couple other horror folks but that's it that's all i have um i i feel like there's a hesitancy to move some projects forward because right now um uh the unions iatsi now they're on the verge of striking and they most yeah. likely will strike in July. The past couple of years have been very hard for projects. Yeah. Uh, if it was ever hard to get them off the ground before, it's even harder now. Oh, yeah. You know? um, we did a, you... a talk with a guy not too long ago who runs a small production company for uh, to help out uh, independent films and things. And he was even saying that, you know, it is extremely difficult. And that's why he does what he does to it's try and help time. small. Yeah. It's it's like, it really feels like in times of need in the industry, it's like the enormous budget stuff is always going to be fine. Yep. And the no budget stuff is always going to be fine. And that's but the there thing. There is a big amount of room in between that two. Yeah. And that is completely in jeopardy. I so, wish they would I, do I, I, more with horror. I wish yeah. they wouldn't continue doing the, in my opinion, the more easy, yeah. stomachable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're taking color by numbers, man. Just yeah. color by numbers. But you gotta, you can't take risks. No risks means no failure. And, so. and we don't have time to talk about it. But we don't. We don't have time to talk about it. You did mention something before we started uh, rolling, uh, and something I'm going to be keeping an eye out, even if it takes years to get. You've got the first few pages of some Chrome Skull comic books you're working on, and so yeah, um, I will be well, watching for that. So personally. cool! Yeah, it, it'll <laughs> take. It's going to take some time because I'm. I'm. It's very expensive. I'm yeah. going page by page. I don't feel comfortable with the crowdfunder right now. Maybe we will just to complete it, or maybe when it comes yeah. time for the the printing process, because yeah. that's like another fucking five grand right there. <laughs> uh, I like so I might need some help with stickers. that. But. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. If you get if you get to that point, yeah, I'm sure stuff. you'll let me. I'm sure between yeah. us following each other on Twitter, and you'll let me know what's happening. So, and we'll be. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Friend. You'll be the first to know. Hey, so hey thank we, you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, we do. We do have one quick talk. question. I've been right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one question we ask at the end of every interview, and you're Italian, so I expect the correct answer. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Pineapple oh, on pizza, yes or no? Oh Christ. I guess this is where my the little piece of Irish that I have comes uh -oh. out. Uh oh yeah. Well, okay, let, let okay, let me clarify with this. Let me just start this. I'm Irish too, so I'm waiting for an explanation. I've been vegan for the last six years. Oh, oh so, okay. so I don't do ham, I don't do yeah. cheese. But uh -huh. when I did eat pizza, I enjoyed myself a little bit of a Hawaiian slice. I'm not gonna oh. lie, I'm not gonna oh. bullshit. How uh, can I, you? I, oh no! You just okay. You upset yeah, yeah. the ancestry of all Irish. Not, not only too. that. Not only that. Salty. I'm. I'm telling you. Sweet. Our friends. I'm Salty, telling you. Sweet. I, okay, friends. I will the, go the, with that. All your all our East of... Coast Italian friends, uh, Carlo, who couldn't be with us tonight, they're going to be very upset with you. Um, oh please! I haven't had a I, piece, I, piece of pizza on the West Coast <laughs> in my entire life. Well, no, I, I, I can't. I, I don't want to be that East Coast guy complaining about. It's a <laughs> out here. Well, the, I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. we won't, we won't talk about allowed. California Pizza Kitchen. Okay, that stuff. No, we just no. It's a problem. <laughs> I'd rather have a Helios Pizza than a California Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> That's just me, though. Yeah. But hey, thank you guys for having thank me you. so much. No, thanks. Yeah. Maybe thank when you. I when I get the comic book out, we'll uh, maybe do it again or something. Well, we I'll can even do stuff. it again if you have some other projects coming later too. Right? Yeah. Cool. Cool. That'd Anytime be awesome. you want, Nick, let me know. I mean, you like who. We're always talking to each other anyway, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're around. We're around. We're yeah. present. We're hanging out. Yeah. We're hanging out yeah, virtually. Yeah, yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to follow you on Twitter, too, now. Please do. Come by. I Absolutely. say a lot of stupid shit. Yes, he hey, does. me what too. Follow me. I, you can follow me. Oh, I got. Watch my yeah, crazy yeah, no, I, I always follow <laughs> anyone yeah. back that's that's not a, a sex bot. So, and, you know, and as long as you're say, a real human, I am a real, you're a real human, I'll yeah. follow back every time. And I, and I will say, Nick has turned me on to some great movies, and I think I've actually talked to him about some movies that he oh, had cool. seen before, too. So, yeah. Sure, yeah, of course, of course. That, that's why the we're there, thing. man, yep. for, the, for the nerds to be nerds amongst and, each other. And like I said, I do do props and special effects and stuff, so, and I do, I am actually yeah. a professional seamstress, so Whoa, you probably you enjoy mm -hmm. seeing some of that stuff, too. Yeah. I just did SpongeBob the Musical. Oh, the kids, sick. your kids would love it. SpongeBob. I bet they <laughs> would. There's a oh, junior version it. that anyway. you would have to see at elementary schools. It's only 65 minutes I'm long. Actually, if you're a seamstress, I'm actually kind of taking out some bids right now for someone to make me a Superman costume. Okay. I um, well, well, my wife works with uh, asylum seekers and whatnot, and mm -hmm. there's like a big children's wing. And a few times I've dressed up like Batman and stuff just to entertain the kids, but. I really want to do a Superman suit, but the, okay, the cheap yeah. ones, they're, they're too cheap. Yeah, no, 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 no. And, I, we've done Superman and we've done Batman you know, several times, and I believe we've done Superman two or three times. So, yeah, well, yeah I'll, 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 I'll follow I'll give you. You, some you follow me and um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, send me a DM and, and yeah. We'll do we'll, some following. We'll yeah, figure it out. Yeah, for we'll sure. Figure it for out. sure. But, Thank you, Nick. Absolutely. So, Great talking. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. See you soon. See you soon, Paul. Pleasure to meet you, Madeira. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.